Hello everybody, Tai Chi Twins here. My name's Jeremy Rorty. And I'm Joshua Rorty. Welcome to another episode of What's on the Weapons Wall. What are we going over today, Jeremy? Well, I think today we should go over throwing stars. And uh, I'll start with this three-pointed star right here. Uh, and it's only kind of a three-pointed star. You notice it has these little spikes on the side. We'll have a picture up of it. Uh, now, a problem with a three-pointed star is normally you have to, you can't stick it by the side. It's got to stick right in by the tip. However, with this design, I think these side spikes stick out far enough where you might be able to stick it on the side. So that's a little bonus design to that. I'm not sure exactly where we got this shuriken from. It's been in our collection for quite a while. I don't know if we bought it or if it was gifted. I think it was gifted to us, donated by somebody else who wasn't using it. Because I don't remember that one from our youth. The one I remember was this one right here, this four point star. I bought this from the same uh, pawn shop that I ended up buying this boot knife from. This is a really heavy throwing star. And it's actually carbon steel, so it's uh, really highly made and razor sharp, especially on the tips. But this is really kind of more of a fantasy ninja star, even though it is really good at throwing. Most of the time, the ninja star would not kill somebody in and of itself. Usually, it would be a smaller star that they could apply some kind of poison. A lot of times, that might be a biological poison. Uh, the next one I'll go over is hiding right back here, and it is a five-pointed star. Now, this one was made by my father-in-law, and it's actually made out of uh, nails for horseshoes. So it's a pretty good metal. I'm not sure what type of metal that would be, uh, but it's pretty strong. Something like this, you could actually use as a hidden dagger. I could hold this in my hand and still be able to strike with it and not hurt my hand. Uh, you might be able to set this up on the ground if you buried it a little bit. Somebody could step on it, it would act like a caltrop. So that was another big purpose of the Ninja Star. It wasn't necessarily for killing your opponent, maybe wounding, unless, you know, like he was saying, it's got some poison on it. But otherwise, it'd be used for distractions. You'll hear if I just drop this very clear sound that might draw attention to wherever I threw that star allowing me to go somewhere else. Now as far as the number of points, odd number of points generally stick better with the number one being a five point throwing star. Problem with even number is like with this four point star, you'll see that if it hits on the edge, it's pretty much flat and it's probably not going to stick that way. But with a five point star, because it's an odd number, it's got a higher chance of sticking. Now, as far as the very first throwing weapon we ever bought, here's this little teeny tiny ninja star. When we were in high school, we marched in the marching band, and one of the many things that we would do every year was the Pear Blossom Parade. Along with the parade, there's a whole festival where vendors set up booths and sell various wares including knives and throwing stars. In this case, it's got a little hole here on the top. We'll get a closer picture of it. It's supposed to be a necklace, but you can tell because it's actually bent that uh, we've actually used it for throwing and it sticks pretty well. Problem is it's got those little shelves, so it's not gonna stick very deep. You're only gonna get, what, maybe a quarter inch of a, a stick but it's so light that I think it's gonna be a lot like the kunai. It's gonna stick easily, even if the point barely touches it. So let's give these a shot and let's see how well they throw and what the differences are. Let's take a look at the three-point star first. This three-point star is made out of a thick stainless steel. It measures three inches across at its widest point and weighs in at a total of 29 grams. Altogether, the three-point star was definitely the hardest one to stick. The points were definitely sharp enough, but if it didn't hit directly with the tip, it wouldn't stick. However, we were able to get plenty of good throws out of the three-point star, including a few side sticks. Next up, numerically speaking, would be the four-point star. This hefty shuriken is made out of a high carbon steel. It's only a third of an inch wider than the three-point star, but it weighs in at over twice as much at 65 grams. This one was definitely easier to stick, mainly because of its weight. Listen to the difference on the impact between the two. 
also because of its razor sharp edge, we were easily able to get it to stick on the side. Next up would be the Five Point Star. This one being made out of horseshoe nails is probably just mild steel. It measures a total of four and three quarters inches at its widest point and weighs in at 39 grams. That satisfying ring tells you that the mild steel must have been hardened through the welding process. Geometrically speaking, the five point star is the easiest one to stick. Pretty much the only way it wouldn't stick is if you missed the target. Last but not least would be the star with the most points. This 8 point ultra thin stainless steel ninja star measures only 2 and 1 quarter inches and weighs a tiny 10 grams. This star is so small that you may not be able to see it stick but you can definitely hear it stick. Listen to the impact compared to the other three ninja stars. Because this one was so easy to throw, it was nice to mix it in with the other ninja stars when attempting different tricks. And now for the soothing sounds of dubs and ninja stars. Leave a comment if you'd like this to be a meditation track. An alternative grip for the Ninja Star is to hold it between your fingers. This grip allows you to gently hold up to three Ninja Stars and throw them at the same time. The key is to subtly hold the stars at your side so they don't realize you're even holding them, and then throw it before they expect it. Even if you miss or only hit with one, it still causes a great distraction. Samurai would commonly train in this technique to hide the action of their sword draw. Not too surprisingly, they all stuck pretty well. Actually, I think the one we stuck the best was either this five point star stuck almost every time except for when you didn't hit the target and then also this little teeny tiny eight point star just looking at it now while he's holding it up i can even see how some of the corners are bent but pretty much every time we hit the target with that it would stuck it's a very rare occasion that we didn't i think the most difficult one we had sticking was this three prong one it's partly because again it's not very heavy that one being not very heavy, it's got all those really sharp points to stick by. This one, unless it hit just right, it wasn't sticky. The four point star, again, this one's carbon steel. This is the heaviest of all of them. This is three times heavier than the silver one. Uh, because of that and its razor sharp edge, we found it would stick sideways quite often. And even then it was hard to wiggle out. If it stuck by its tip, it would sink in at least a good three quarters to half a, a, an inch somewhere in there. And again, you still had to wiggle it to get it out. I even had to do a trick where I had to get one inside the other to leverage it out. So it was definitely, this would hurt if you got hit by it. The one thing that is more challenging about throwing ninja stars is the Easter egg hunt when you miss the target. Matter of fact, this one right here, we probably lost it three times. One time we thought it was lost for good. It ended up sliding under something. We couldn't see where it was. Got a little flashlight, finally got a glint across it. But we didn't have near as hard time trying to find the knives as we did trying to find some of the uh, ninja stars. Now, luckily enough, the smallest ninja star stuck most of the time, so it was pretty easy to find. With so many weapons left on the weapons wall, which one would you like us to showcase next? Leave a comment down below. As with any skill, it takes practice and proper training to get good at it. So make sure you look for a good school in your area. 
If you're in Southern Oregon, contact us for our locations and times. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, like it and make sure to share that with a friend. Click the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so you can catch our next exciting video.